Hello and welcome to my channel. <clears throat> well, what you see before you are some very fantastic leather slits and a card holder and wallet type thing that a um, very good friend of mine and subscriber, uh, Sam, over in Ireland or Great Britain, over in that area, uh, he wanted to make these slips mainly this one for cracky cracky's gone missing right now but this is the uh cracky backup fits in there perfectly very nice uh, he said this one was made from some older leather um 1950s he hand stitched it he all did all this work by hand and it's excellent I, thank you so much man this is fantastic he's done great work now this is a larger slip and i've got that new worn clip trapper and we'll put that in there oh plenty of room goes all the way in completely covers it all nicely hand stitched that's what i like about hand stitching is that it's not like a machine exact and perfect you know somebody you know did this by hand and probably has got blood you know from doing this because if you've ever worked with leather it's tough um they make a thing where you can uh it's like a four prong thing where you can sit there and hit it with a hammer or something like that and it'll punch these little holes and it'll make the holes for you but i i just have a leather awl type thing a handy stitcher type thing a leather awl that's what i use whenever i make stuff and i've had it for years but thank you so much man this is awesome um what i got in here right now i was gonna put some money in here to show you but i actually don't have any money i mean um paper money whatsoever i looked don't even have one dollar um but oh oh i know what i've got let me just pause this <clears throat> i've got a one pound note from when i was in england Sir Isaac Newton. I don't know what year. It'd probably be the 80s on this. Chief Cashier. J.B. Page, it looks like, possibly. Yeah, but I've got one pound. I think in my um, bedroom I've got uh, a five pound note and some Korean money and some Vietnamese money and uh, all kinds of weird stuff. And my uh, grandfather's got, I've got some of my grandfather's money he had buried in his barn in a coffee can. Um, some Mexican money. And we were in Texas, so Mexico was just right across the border. So I guess that was his getaway money or whatever. But here's my uh, shrunken down version of my DDT, DD214, Department of Defense 214. You need that sometimes for identification. And of course, there's a little magnifying glass, you know, so we can zoom this. But thanks a lot, man. This is really awesome. These are going to go great. When I find Cracky, it's going to go in this one. But in the meantime, the backup will, you know, ride around in it, take its place. Cracky's going to be pissed that the backup was in there but yeah these are awesome and the other thing i got i'll i'll do another video on it or maybe i'll just add it to this one it's been raining the whole week i'll throw in a video of how hard it was raining but uh yeah this is a smaller size slip and it'll, even then it'll fit perfectly fine with this larger trapper so yeah this is the uh, work knife It'll fit in the smaller one, too, I think. It depends on if this crown is too high. And this is, like, the smallest one. I'm just trying it out. Yeah, you don't want to push the seams too much. I mean, it, it'll it go in there. Yeah, it'll form fit. Man, this is like it was made for it. <laughs> the work knife. You just pull that sucker right out. Yeah, these are awesome. Thank you so much. So, he just does this, not, you know, uh, commercially or anything. He just 
like me, he's retired. He's just a hobby. All right, so the other thing that I've got in is this marbles. It came in this. This looks like a, a pizza box, man. You see it? You go, wow, this is notice. This item is labeled essential for survival under Plan 26C, Part 6, Essential Gear. Do not leave behind. They don't reference what uh, that other plan is, you know, where that plan came from, but here's your pizza slice. It came like this. <clears throat> it's a tactical haunt of Tomacon. Let me show you the whole cover. Sorry, I just flashed through it right there. It's the X1 Tactical Tomahawk. This is what I was looking forward to get in because, man, if I can find another piece of furniture out there when I go do my little excursions walking around and stuff i'll carry this little sucker with me you might do a real actual tryout on a couch or a bed um but it's a 15 inch tomahawk and it's one solid piece of steel so you don't have to worry about you know your tang breaking or anything like that it's nice and flat and it's not too heavy it's 1.23 pounds it comes with this little sheath. Now the sheath is made in China, and the hatchet, or tomahawk, is made in El Salvador. El Salvador. Focus over there. I don't know why this thing don't want to focus. There you go. But it has a very nice edge on it. It's got a nice primary bevel here, you know, and then the secondary bevel. It's nice and sharp. All I had to do. A lot of times you get hatchets. Uh, and the edge is real rough. I mean, it's not even finished well. Like that uh, Walmart one that I got. It's only a $5 hatch, but jeez. You ain't gonna cut crap with it. Um, so you got this, which is very nice. And then on the other end, you've got a nice little spike. I'm sorry, I didn't bring my measuring stuff, but it's like one. It's about two and a half inch spike. And I know this is three inch edge right here. So yeah, and you got a paracord wrap on here. I came, whoops, I bumped into that. Comes with that. And a little lanyard here, which is, even my wrist, which are small, my hand can't fit through that. But you you could put like a couple of fingers in there to help it if you keep you from losing it. If you felt like that was an issue. Uh, it's a simple sheath right here. But, let me see if I can get it out in the sun where you can see it. Yeah, there we go. A little bit more. Focus over there. Alright. It's a, a nylon cordura sheath. The sheath itself is made in China. They tell you that right away. Um, but it has two rivets right here. And two rivets right here. And then three snaps. And the way this thing works is... You put the little pointy in first. And you rock it. And then you snap it like that and then there's a little belt carry thing right here and it carries real well on the side of your hip it just carries flat and even and when you need to use it you just snap this open and just pull it down now sometimes it kind of like hang pull you got to pull down and out i forget to do that but uh, it comes out real easily and then putting it back in is kind of a chore sometimes because you're trying to look at your hip and everything and guide it just right i can tell this is going to get poked through eventually from what i'm doing the way i put it in but it just takes some getting used to <clears throat> and uh around here this is all you really need because we don't process a lot huge amount of wood and stuff but this thing has got multiple purposes you know i mean you've got um This is armor piercing capability right here. You need to break through some armor. Or it could be like an ice axe. You know, where you want to keep yourself from falling off that cliff. And you're about to fall. You're hanging on by a tomahawk. But the history behind these were... Uh, I think I'll put it up there. I read it before, but I don't remember all of it. But in the Vietnam War... Americans, you know, like most wars, would carry whatever they had around, just hatchets and stuff like that. And they wanted to, they wanted an improved one, specifically designed for combat. 
And uh, the American Tomahawk Company, I think, came out with this one. And I'll put the name of the guy who designed it and, you know, thought of it and everything else. But, uh, you know, um, knives and tomahawks and stuff like that are weapons that uh, when you don't have to worry about the ammunition running out. Uh, or if your weapon jams or anything like that, if, if it gets up close and personal, you know, this can do some damage. <laughs> you know, believe me, you watch um, Lynn Thompson or Patriot with uh, Mel Gibson and stuff, how a tomahawk can be used. But American Indians use them fairly well. But anyway, it's good for a brush clearing thing. And uh, if you're camping and everything, it could be your, like your little backup, your little... You hear that noise in the middle of the night, you think a bar is going to attack you. You got your hatchet or your tomahawk with you. So there you go. Sorry for rambling on like this, but um, did a little review while I was at it. But thank you for this so much, Sam. These are great. And uh, it's harder for knives, little knives like these, like cracking and stuff, to get lost when they're in a slip. Because then you've got this, you can see them, you know, where they're at what they're up to. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Somebody order rain? Let's hear. Your package has arrived. You've got snails. <laughs> Gotta fix that. That should really be coming down there. There's a drain. It goes over here. There should be another one right there. Goes, Man, look at that. Yeah. And this, they don't care. No gutter there. Right.